Hello and welcome to The Two Dyspraxics. I'm Barbara Neal. And I'm Matthew Munson. And today we're going to be looking at memory in terms of dyspraxic people and our memories. It's quite a, it's quite a common thing, I think, for a lot of dyspraxics, isn't it, to kind of not have a good memory particularly. Well, yeah. certainly for me. I don't, I don't know about you, Barbara. Oh but yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> My memory's not brilliant. <laughs> yeah. But um, it is a bit weird, though, I have to say, because um, I've built a, a strategy... We've come up with a strategy which is quite an interesting one, and I, we have discussed this. Mm. And it's not something that you share particularly, is it? But for remembering phone numbers, and that yeah, is, I, um, I can't do this. I've got, <laughs> I've got a really weird way of doing it, and I wasn't sure if it was just me. So I've discussed it with Matthew, and it looks as though it may just be me. <laughs> <laughs> but normally, because a phone number will have a, a code, a dialing code, and then the number itself. So I kind of have two conscious levels that I remember it on. So I'll look at the dialing code first and then get like an imprint of that. So it's a kind of, it sounds weird as I'm describing I'm, it. Actually. I'm intrigued by it. And yeah. so I remember that on on one level and then I keep that kind of not quite in the back of my mind. So it's still there. I'm still aware of it. And then I'll take the other part of the phone number, which is the unique number part and maybe just recite that over to myself, recite it, recite it, until I can get to a point where I can write it down or put it into my phone or whatever. So I'm actually consciously remembering something on two slightly different levels. And that <laughs> do you think that's do you, do you, might that be something to do with your hypnotherapy training, do you think? Or, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know, but... Well, possibly. I really have no idea because I didn't know it was only me who did it. Maybe it's not. So if if... Anybody who's watching this does the same thing and remembers things in two slightly different ways mm. and then is able to put them together. I'd really, really love to hear from you because um, it would be nice to know I'm not the only one. I think you might be. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. No, I'm prepared to accept that if that's the case. <laughs> but is, is that, doesn't that show that even with dyspraxics, people's memory memories are different? You know, we've both got mm. bad memories, but actually Barbara can maintain a piece of information that I simply couldn't do someone gave me a telephone number i couldn't write it down, down within five seconds gone completely gone barbara I, can simply hold it for longer i do have to say though that when i do that it's very tiring it's, oh, it's hard work to do it's not an easy thing to do but um it is something i've managed to um get to grips with yeah. shall we say um it doesn't always work if i'm really tired then it's oh no yeah i can't put that much effort into it T tiredness does affect my memory hugely I, I agree with you completely although I, I found sorry as i say with for me um using a, an online calendar really helps you know my calendar on my phone you sync to the calendar i, I, I use gmail um, and it's it's linked to each other and that is really useful you know my life is my life is on my calendar i don't know what i do without it Really Likewise, don't. you know, and I have to um, make notes of everything in my diary and and so on, which is on my phone. You know, so it's all electronic, good old electronics. So yeah. I don't know how to cope without them. Um, something that's interesting, also, it's an observation really about memory, is that although my short term memory is a bit rubbish, frankly, um, I've got a stupidly vivid um, oh God, I have. way of remembering things that are. Yeah, from years and years oh, yeah. ago that don't matter. You know, I can remember some things in absolutely vivid, minute mm. detail. Yeah, I, I, I sometimes say to my parents, do you remember when I was, I don't know, seven years old and we went to this place? And they look at me and think, how the hell do you remember? <laughs> and I don't know, and that's that's 25 years ago or whatever. I can somehow remember it. Yeah. How is that possible? There's an occasion I took my two older sons, it was before the youngest one was born, but I took the two older ones on a boat trip. And I could tell you what all three of us were wearing, you know, down to Rob's Judge Dread T-shirt and, wow. and white shorts. And Jim had a little matching pair of shorts and stripy T-shirt. And, you know, I can remember in that sort of detail, which is bizarre, really, because yeah, I don't it's... need to know that. No. I don't need to remember it. But... But, but that does show the positive. It shows that we have got a good memory. If, if we can push it into the long-term memory, we dispatch it, we'll have good memories. Yeah. And it's handy for writing too. So oh. it's a really good positive. You know, yeah. you can if you can recall something in minute detail because you want to write about it, that's a bit of a gift, really, yeah. isn't it? Oh, but it, it's, <laughs> a, it's a big gift. A lot of dyspraxia you can give us gifts. So I do say that. So, a slightly dodgy short-term memory might be quite a low price to pay for some mm. of the pluses. Absolutely, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, definitely. And on that wonderful bombshell, um, thank you for watching, <laughs> and we'll see you again soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye.